Yeah, in, in a second. <laughs> okay. Yeah, get ready for your close up. <laughs> oh, that's the wrong okay. book. Where's the book? Uh -huh. <laughs> we are on Sutra 23. All right. So that's book two, 23. All right. <laughs> we are on book two, 23. <laughs> I'm going to start with the um, Sanskrit. Seva Swami Saktoya Svarupapal Bihi Hetu Samyoga. Seva, being owned Prakriti, one's Swami, the owner Purusha, Saktoya of powers, Sva, one's Rupa nature. Savrupa, one's true nature, essence. Uparabhidi, recognition, apprehension. Hitu, uh, cause and sam yoga is union. The union of the owner, Purusha, and the own, Prakriti, causes recognition of the nature and the powers of them both. Sam yoga union is necessary for the Purusha to realize itself. With the help of nature, samyoga means perfect union or junction. And here it doesn't mean the union of an individual self with a higher self, but the union of the Purusha and Prakriti, self nature, self and nature. When they are completely apart, they don't exist themselves. Their connection, however, let us know them both. They help each other. It is something like if you want to print with white letters, you must have a black background for contrast. You can't write white letters on a white background. Through the Prakriti, we realize we are Purusha. If not for the Prakriti, we cannot know ourselves. So Prakriti isn't just bondage, as many people think it is necessary. I'm gonna keep reading. Tasya. Hitura Vida. Tasya is it's it's Hitu is cause of Avidaya is um, ignorance. The cause of this union is ignorance. Here Patanjali laughs at the idea he just expressed. The cause of the Sam Yoga is ignorance. This may seem a bit confusing, but if we understand it properly, there's no puzzle. You see, in the previous sutra. We're still in the world and wondering about the reason of nature. Once the Purusha understands itself, it thinks, how did this union come about? It's because I've forgotten myself? What an ignorant person I was. Because of my ignorance, I created this union. Such a person laughs at it, but this attitude comes only after realization. It's like a dream person who upon waking laughs at his or own his or her own frightening dream. The understanding behind this sutra is a result of realization. Once we realize we can advise other, I, others, I was ignorant. I had terrible experiences. I thought nature was real, happiness was real. I ran after them, but now I know what they are. I learned the hard way. Do you also want to learn, have to learn the hard way? Why don't you take my advice? These sutras are reminiscent of the four noble truths of, of the Buddha, the misery of the world, the cause of misery, the removal of that misery, and the method used to remove it. Patanjali tells us that pain can be avoided. He further tells us that its cause is ignorance. In Sutra 26, he gives us another word, hana. The removal of this misery, and then hano poya, the method to remove it. We can really see the similarity between the Four Noble Truths and the Yoga Sutras. We, needed, we needn't search for who copies whom. Truth is the same always. Whoever ponders it will get the same answer. The Buddha got it. Sri Patajali got it. Lord Jesus got it. Prophet Muhammad got it. The answer is the same. But the method of working it out may vary this way or that. All right. 
that is sutra 23 and 24. So to, to go back to sutra 23, let me just reread. The union of the owner Purusha and the own Prakriti causes the recognition of natures and powers of them both. So this, this sort of union um, is how I was introduced to the philosophy of yoga is a union. Um, and that is kind of the idea of taking ex the external world and your internal self and meshing it together so you can realize that you're not just your physical body, your physical experience, but you're unionizing yourself with the outer world. Also, union in the sense that whatever is in your heart and whatever is in your mind you're bringing it together this union um and for this he's to me um when he starts to talk about purusha and prakriti he's kind of making sense of this world we live in being purusha the the um the, let's say like a bigger machine and uh, Prakriti being the ind individual parts, always in friction, always moving uh, as gears to, to kind of operate this world. So he's talking about the union, right? And they kind of, they need to be uh, in concert for it to even be a union. Like there has to be material, like raw matter um, for there to even be a world. So in the next part, which is which I'm happy I kept reading last night. I'm happy I just didn't stop. Um, he he kind of um, looks at that notion like uh, I they said Patanjali laughs at the idea he just expressed saying, okay, once you um, realize that they need each other, that the material world things are always happening, things are always um, going to be imperfect or unstable um, to have this bigger world or this bigger nature in it. Um, that is kind of the realization you have to, to I don't want to say, and this is my, I want to say a little bit of an issue. It sounds like disassociation when anything that is tran transcendental uh, when you transcending an experience. So to me, it kind of seems like this idea of Sam Yoga, and let me just read again, this idea of the union, um, Purusha, the Sam Yoga is, is just a, a space that we need to do what we need to do to kind of um, tap into a higher frequency or, or to to work through whatever we have to work through so um, our soul and our spirit can transcend. And that is the ignorance of nature. And to go back to, I think it was Sutra, um, I, I'm not too sure, I think it was 18 or 19. Um, I remember Adriana read it uh, and we discussed that story of the pig, the king uh, Indra or Indira, something of that nature came down and um and i want to get it right but um they came down to earth and um, manifested as a pig and lived happily as a pig um they had a you know wife and pig kids and the other gods were really upset because he was in this pig form and he was basically just saying hey i'm happy and liberated <laughs> like kind of leaving me alone and then they killed all the pigs and killed him and then he then sounded like he thanked them saying wow i was in this nature of of pig life which you know is kind of sad to us it was i was like okay why'd you have to kill all these pigs but i guess the lesson there is whatever the nature of what you're doing it's like you could always kind of be wrapped in that world um, and, um, I was listening to a, um, I was listening to a talk yesterday that spoke about, um, some of these sutras, um, 
And then he compared this idea and he said something that kind of really made sense to me. He said, this idea being expressed maybe um, is a new perspective once you kind of reach this samadhi or this internal bliss or once your your um your idea start to transcend the the world around you but you don't disassociate yourself and i and i had issues with yoga for so long because i always thought there was a disassociation that was happening like oh okay I'll just be in internal bliss and just move on and not engage in this world. But it's once you find, once you realize this union, or once you realize that everything is um, in concert together, um, the ignorance, I guess, comes from the realization that whatever perspective you were meeting it with the world and engaging it with um, was not from that same idea that, hey, this is all of us. Like even the, the how you garden or how you engage with ants and little insects and animals, um, you kind of, maybe you, your perspective starts to change. And this, this um, the person who was doing the talk, he, he used, and he said that this idea is like the world is a gymnasium. And if this world is a gymnasium, it's used as a resource and a tool for, for us to transcend into a, um, our higher purpose. So that is the ignorance of um, kind of this, this realization that you know, we're not just this um, permanent, uh, impermanent body um, that's walking the earth, but there's, the body is just a vehicle. Um, but, you know, there's a higher, we have a higher purpose. Um, and this is just, I guess, a moment in time. But I, I really, it, it started to help me, um, look at everything a little different, similar to um, also Amanda's comment in regards to the matrix. And um, I know the, the matrix ha that has a lot of uh, philosophical type of um, concepts in it, but just to, to bring up this, this word Maya back into play from Sutra 22, it's the illusion the illusion of nature, right? It's, it's, it's this whole world that, um, and I'm, I don't want to say that like whatever is happening is just, but it's a world that's meant for friction. It's a world that's always changing. So, and that's another tough idea for me to, to grapple with this, this word illusion. I would imagine it's, it's kind of a different, connotation in um in this sort of philosophy because my understanding of illusion is and it might be wrong it, it's fake it's fake it's it's, it's kind of not real it's, it's like a hallucinate hallucination um which nothing really is hmm. it's, yeah there's a lot to grapple here um i don't want to just keep on chatting about what's on my brain. Does anybody else have, you know, any insight they would like to share in regards to these ideas of union being ignorance and this idea of union between Prakriti and Purusha? I'd like to share. Please. Um, I love how he takes us like back and forth this is good, this is not so good. Uh, mm. This is this is an illusion, this is necessary. Like, it's almost like, I don't wear glasses, but for people who do wear glasses, like sometimes you can really notice people um, like pull something, like when people who have like eyesight stuff, they go, they go like this to try to see 
Mm. But then, but then, really, for them to see clearly, they have to like push it away. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm thinking while you were talking, I was thinking like, this is exactly what Patanjali does with the sutras. He like pulls them close to us, and then we start believing one thing, and we're like, oh wow, yeah. And then he pulls it away, and suddenly you can see clearer. And it was mm. almost like it's like yesterday when I was saying how. Um, you know, before I chose this body, this incarnation, I had a bird's eye view of what my life would be. And I chose it on purpose. Mm. But now that I'm in it, I'm so close to it that it's that it's hard to see it. And like, I think here, he's convincing us once again, or trying to, or clarifying for us once again, um, that it's necessary that like yes there are things about nature we should we should resist or maybe not resist is the right word but there are things in our nature that um we should recognize we should wake up to we should see them as an illusion but not hate the illusion either like really love the illusion because the illusion is necessary like the illusion mm -hmm. the illusion is what lets me see mm -hmm. Um, the illusion is what lets me see myself in my tr in my true nature, and like the fact that he says own. I mean, I don't know Sanskrit, but the fact that the translation says the union of the owner, so I mm -hmm. own. Right. It's almost like I own nature. Like I like I like when I'm saying I like when I when I use the term own too because. It's like, I own my truth. I own my faults. I, I own my, I own who I am. I own up to doing something like to own is like to be responsible for, but also this sort of like, there's a little up for me, there's this connotation of like to own, I think of like a slave and mm. that nature can be a slave to me and i think he says it i think he yeah, says it yesterday the last sentence it becomes our slave yeah yeah the last sentence once we are masters we are no longer bound by nature it becomes our slave and then of course the next future he's mm -hmm. like you own you own nature nature is your slave mm -hmm. and you right. like union of these two lets you recognize the power there is in both of them, the power in the illusion, and then the power in um, the power in the illusion, but then the power of the true self. Like I, I can use these two and play with them without really um, attaching to them, without clinging hardcore, like, Ah, you know, when I'm deep in my pain, I'm deep in my heartbreak, I'm identifying with this pain, I'm thinking the pain is me or that I am affected by the pain. And that's the illusion because who I am on the inside, the true me is untainted, untouched. I'm, I'm always whole and complete. Mm -hmm. um, and then the cause of this union is ignorance. Is that the one you read, 24? Yeah. Yeah. Um, there was something I wanted to say about this one too, which is, um, so the method of working out. Okay, maybe I don't have anything to say right now about that one. I, um, I wonder if the Four Noble Truths, like where did that come from, the Four Noble Truths? Did he just bring that up or does he yeah. somewhere else I think um, yeah. you think what I think it's, it's from Buddhist, yeah. it's from Buddhist it's, I can hear that it sounds broken up yeah we didn't hear you Jackie so the four noble truths is from he's just referring to Buddhist philosophy it's not part of the sutras it's part of Buddhist philosophy okay because I'm thinking of um I'm thinking of, um, oh my gosh, what's the writer? Don Miguel Ruiz, is that him? He writes, he writes um, 
the four agreements. He writes the four agreements. Okay, I think never he's mind. just introducing it here because then he says in sutra 26, he gives us like, I think he's going to continue on the next few sutras in his version of the four truths. And the method to remove it. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The four, the four truths in short, short are, um, hold on, I had it here. Uh, the truth of suffering, the truth of the cause of suffering, the truth of the end of suffering, and the truth of the path that leads to the end of suffering. And that's, that's Buddha's teachings. Mm. So I guess it's kind of like the eight limbs for us, but in, I don't know much about it, but yeah, it well, like I have heard. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I said it sounds something like how we use, we look at the eight limbs as our pillar, something similar to um, mm -hmm. Buddhism teachings. What yeah. I love about this is his last sentence. The answer uh, is the same, but the method of working out may vary this way or that. I, I love math. I love algebra. And I loved it so much in high school because you would get a textbook and the answers would be in the back. So like all the kids would be like, oh, I don't have to do my homework. I'll just scribble in the answer. Like, oh, one plus one is two. But in algebra, you have to show your work. Like your homework sheets weren't just like one plus one equal two. Like there'd be like a, a space like this for you to like work out the problem. And so I loved, I love that because I love knowing the answer. Like I'm the type of reader, I'm not, I'm not like this anymore. Well, I'll read the last chapter just to know what happened before I even start the book. <laughs> Oh, um, no. I Google yeah, no, no, every just... movie. I can't see through I, a movie I, without knowing the ending. Eric hates that I do this. Yeah. I do that too, actually. For movies, what? I do that too. I've done Not that with ending, But I like, <laughs> I research a whole movie just to get myself into it and think like I'm an expert on it just so I can watch it. Yeah. But no, no. <laughs> Oh Finish my gosh, me. I have to the whole point the is to be travel, travel along on the journey. Oh my gosh. No, <laughs> I, I, need a, I, need, I, now, I need like, a step ahead. But I, I think ahead. like with life, like this is our answer book. And like we can all choose different paths. Like Adriana can take the Four Noble Truths and this one can take Lord Jesus and I can take Pantandali. And maybe there are other ways that aren't even described in here that people are creating for themselves. And we're all gonna get to the end. And the end we know of life is death. And then if whatever you believe after that, it's like we all know the answer and we're all creating our own paths. Like we're all like getting to the answer on our own way. And we're just getting to work it out with these, um, these different ways. Yeah, I get so excited thinking about like a math problem and trying to figure it out. And like this, it's like a puzzle. And <laughs> look at it, Michelle. Well, maybe I should have you as my tutor. <laughs> I'm not, but that's the thing, like, I'm not good at teaching it. I'm not a good, I have a great podcast for you. I'm not a good teacher, but this is like my a little teacher for, for, um, I feel oh. you know, like when you were in school and you were allowed like one cheat sheet for the test, like did that ever happen where you could like put as many answers as you can on an index card and bring it to the test in high school? This is like my, my life cheat sheet. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Well, what I love about that sentence and it, it goes to like a really personal experience that like it still kind of ticks, it, it kind of irritates me still. And this was years ago, but I used to belong to this beautiful Christian church that helped me get my act together to get into yoga teacher training. Um, Cause like some of the people there were amazing and the pastor is amazing. And, um, but I couldn't, it felt so nice to sing. And, but in my head, it irritated me that I always sang about one thing and one way to God. So it was like always, there's only one way to God and it's true Jesus right. Christ. And it didn't say, oh, like I, I love how these people are where they are and they're able to do what they do, but it didn't sit right here. So I couldn't, I felt like if someone asked me, what are you? Oh, I'm Christian. I'm being a complete coward because it didn't feel right in here. 
And I, um, as I start like kind of easing off from going to church, one woman asked me, and she was like one of the senior ladies that people look up to. And when I said the answer, she goes, oh, then you certainly don't belong here because that's our, whatever she said, like kind of like our, our main philosophy. Aww. And I remember sitting there and I'm um, like, one, if I hadn't gone through training already <laughs> and like filtered a lot of stuff, I probably would have yelled at her. But um, I remember sitting there thinking, wow, lady, like in my head, you know, like you have no right to even tell me this. This is not your place. It's everybody's place. And like, you have no right to turn anyone away because you're literally just, if I was someone else who was going to say, oh, screw it then, like, I guess there is no God or, or you know, whatever, or no higher universe or no anything bigger than me, then I'm just going to walk away and go back to whatever it is. So that sentence to me, and that's what I love about yoga, that it brought me so much closer to uh, whatever you want to call it, the uni universe, <coughs> higher, um, I can't come up with the word. The unicorn? <laughs> yes, unicorns and stars and like that, that something that you feel in there and, and I feel so much more connected, but I don't have to feel bad or this guilt that I have to like filter through that like, <clears throat> oh, but it's not supposed to be like this or it's not supposed to feel like this. There's different paths. And yeah. just because we, we were talking about, like earlier when we were doing book one, we kept talking about the apple. Just because your apple is red doesn't mean that mine have to be red. It could be yellow or green or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you, we, we're all moving through our own path and it's really the same work. We're all doing, trying to do the same work. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And even when you do feel bad, like, I like how you say, like, I don't have to feel bad about these things. But even when I do feel bad, I can even use that. Even, even the feeling bad is the path. Even the feeling bad is like the gateway to the thing. Right. Yeah. I love that Ashley said that we built our own obstacle course for our <laughs> life and then chose that. <laughs> And even like just thinking about like the lessons that come to you, like, oh, you know, you're just having one of those days, you know, like that day and you just wrap yourself in it and you tumble down the hill instead of just stepping back after like the first three lessons of the day. And you're like, <coughs> you have to go sit and breathe. Like even just now I was like, not, I could not stop yawning sitting up. And I'm like, why don't I just lay down? I'm so much more comfortable. I haven't yawned once since I've laid down. Like, why am I fighting it? sitting up like causing all this misery and suffering for myself so like we I think those pause and reflect moments of our obstacles in life like I think that's what nature is like I think we try to put such literal meanings on things like we think of nature of being outside but na isn't nature just anything of the material world so like even just like even us laying against the pillow and using a blanket and being cozy like I was creating like an illusion for myself that I had to sit up and I'm as I'm more present now because I'm not yawning and my eyes aren't tearing up. Right. So I think those op like I always think about that now, like those obstacles, like instead of cat, instead of um, getting caught up in it, I can pause and stop that obstacle course, turn and pivot and go down this way instead and let all the other obstacles for the day just vanish. That, what you just said to me in my head rings as compassion, like finding compassion towards ourselves. Yeah. And it's, um, it used to be like, it used to be impossible for me because that's not how I grew up. <laughs> but like even now I'm doing my, like my 95 teacher, uh, kids teacher training I'm getting up at 4 a.m and my training is from 4 a.m to 8 a.m by choice because I could do it in the afternoon but it's easier because it's quiet and no one's bothering me and I can really be there and then in the afternoon I do 20 minutes where I nap or I sometimes I fall asleep sometimes I don't but it's legs up the wall and it's been my saving grace because like my whole body just numbs out and I don't know where I go and I float 
and and it's like it's okay like that's my time take 20 minute time out and then i'm able to function until nine o'clock and then peace out <laughs> but um i kept going back and forth with it like if i get up early then i'm not going to be able to do stuff with the kit and whatever and it worked like just finding those 20 minutes and getting over all that stuff that was going in my head because this is what i need this month and it made a, it makes a huge difference. Adriana came over once when I was doing my afternoon, and it was like a madhouse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to like I'm trying to be here, and there's like yelling from here. Then the kids got into a fight, and then they bring it into my training, basically. Even though I'm you know I'm on mute, but that's my training space. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So find, like yeah, like finding that that getting out of the like but i'm supposed to be doing this and this and that and just finding compassion and doing what we need and that changes like constantly changes mm -hmm. i think i it's agree with that um no you go jay <laughs> i was i was just thinking yesterday i had said <clears throat> you know that we need to have we, you know, everything's part of it all that we need to have the drops of the ocean to have the ocean. We need to, you know, and so I was listening to you read um, 23 and nodding to myself. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I was thinking yesterday. I was feeling so good that I'm right there. I'm getting this. That's where I was. And then the next one saying, well, all of that's because of ignorance. So that's where I'm at. I'm at the ignorance part. And then <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay, all right, all right. So I'm not, I'm not really there. But I think that he's saying that there, that there is a path that's all about ignorance, but there is a path and don't you want to kind of avoid that pain? But I think sometimes we can avoid the pain. Um, we have to live through it to be able to understand it. And <clears throat> so I'm listening to you guys and what you said, Pam, so this is our roadmap. So that's going to help us so we can kind of clear some of the obstacles because we now have a roadmap. We're actually studying this. We're looking at it. Um, and that you and, and Adriana, you said something about even when you're suffering the pain, you know, because you're reading this, because you're getting the information to kind of clear some of that ignorance, you know that even though you're suffering and the pain you're feeling is, is real to you, that there's a true self that's untouched. And that's got to be comforting to us, even though we're still living through the obstacles, we're still living through that, we've got some guidance to help us to keep coming back to knowing that there's a true nature, that it's, that it's there, that it's untouched. And I think that's what lets us be able to take the 20 minutes with legs up the wall. That's what lets us be able to say, I'm going to lie down. I'm going to give, give myself compassion because we know there's a roadmap. If we were living without knowing there's a roadmap, then we would be suffering more. You know, there would be, and I watch it with my two boys. You know, my, I've got a 20 year old and a 23 year old. And I've often had conversations with my husband where we say, if we could only give them our wisdom, but you can't. The kids have to go through it for themselves. They have to, you have to watch them suffer, which is awful. It's just awful because you know, you watch them go down the path that you know is going to bring them pain and suffering and you can give them advice, but they don't hear it because they're, you know, teenagers or they're young adults. And I so wish that I could give them this book and give them this roadmap, but they're not ready for it. Um, and they're going to have to go through more of that ignorance, more of that, mm -hmm. of that suffering because they don't have the roadmap and they can't hear it from me. They have to find it for themselves. And I think all kids do. I know I did. I, I was brought up in the church and it was beautiful and lovely, but um, I don't know. You still had to somehow find your way to whatever your roadmap is, whether it's the sutras or whether it's the Bible, whatever it is, um, you have to find it yourself somehow. Yeah. You know, and, and it doesn't really matter how many people give you advice. He's saying, why don't you take my advice? Well, you have to be ready for it and you have to, 
choose it yourself. Mm -hmm. So we've chosen it. That's why we're here in the mornings reading this and, and, and doing it. But I, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of babbling. But did that, did that make any sense at all? No, that was, that was so beautiful. I, I no, know. yeah, that was beautiful. That, that makes total, absolute. I think honoring your sons too by that is like really beautiful. And it's so hard. Yeah. It's so hard. And I always, I don't have kids, but I have to separate from them. They're not me. Yeah. You know? And I, so I can I support them, about, but that's it, you know? It's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. Oh. It's so and hard. it's never ending though, because it's like our parents did it to us and their parents did it to them and your kids will do it to their children. And yeah, we can only just live by example. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's what we say as my, my husband and I, that's what we say, but that doesn't always seem to transfer. <laughs> I'm hoping that my belief is, and I have to sit back and, and let it and watch it play out, but my hope is that living by example is the most important thing and that those lessons have gone somewhere inside my boys and it's there because I know they're good boys but boy do they make mistakes you know um <clears throat> and we have to just watch it you have to separate from them at some point you know yeah you know they're by the time by the time they're older teenagers you have to make that separation which is so hard and and, and not live their life for them and and um i mean hopefully you're not doing that even when they're tiny but as they're tiny you do have to make more decisions for them but um it's very very hard to watch them make poor judgments and 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 just support them yeah part of the process part of the process so it is but just want to say, here's the roadmap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I feel like you are the roadmap, though. Like, you are, yeah. the fact that there is uh, this sense of unconditional love in their life mm. allows them to do the things that yeah. bring yeah. mistakes. Like, yeah. I didn't, yeah, if I didn't have the mom that I have, I maybe wouldn't make some mistakes because I wouldn't, I wouldn't be daring. I wouldn't be like, oh, right. I'm safe in the world. I can go and conquer. But sometimes yeah. maybe they're not thinking, not that I want to take you, not that I'm trying to convince you of anything. I just want to say that you're a great mom. That's <laughs> what I want to say. And that sometimes we think the things we're doing that they're learning, like we, we would hope that they learn the good things from us, but sometimes they learn from the bad things too. Yeah. Yeah. And we can't judge other people in their path. Like you just create more worry and illusion by thinking mm -hmm. that that path for them. Like right. it's like the serenity prayer. Like we can't control. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You can only, you can only do so much. Yeah. Who doesn't wish Jackie Byrne was their mom? I know. I want her <laughs> no. to be. No, you don't. <laughs> I'll, um... Their mom and their teacher. <laughs> Jackie, you have to start reading some sutras. It's so nice to hear your voice. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that's, that's definitely true. You should start reading. Anyway, I'm and not anyway, but yeah, no, I know is, transition. Is it time? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yep. Yeah, it is a, a, uh, any last words from anybody before we get into some <coughs> and uh, some thoughtful or non-thoughtful meditation? Okay, so. We're going to start by just starting to relax our shoulders away from our ears, taking a deep inhale and exhale in through the nostrils and out through the nostrils. And today we're going to start with a type of breathing called um, bunny's breath. And we're going to just do this for a couple of rounds. So how bunny breath works is you just take three short inhales through the nostril. So it's, and then an audible exhale out the mouth. Okay. So if we can do this in concert, three short inhales through the nostrils and exhale out of the mouth. Three short inhales through the nostril. And then exhale out the mouth. 
three short inhales through the nostril. And then exhale out the mouth. And you're just gonna take this for three more rounds on your own and you'll be able to drop in.
Taking a nice deep exhale out. Allowing everything to let go and release. That will be all for today's meditation. Namaste. And thank you. Namaste. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you. Right, I'll, I'll see you guys. Thank you guys. See you guys tomorrow. Bye guys. Have a thank good you. day. Bye guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye.